Hey guys, my name's Jamin. Thanks so much for visiting my channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how to deal with an overheating laptop computer and the various things you can do to remedy the situation. So first thing guys, power down your computer the correct way, make sure it's off and unplugged from your charger, and I'll show you how to start dealing with the overheating issue. To demonstrate the steps in this video, I have a Lenovo Legion gaming laptop here that's been overheating. I'm gonna show you how I get inside and fix that situation. But the first thing to do, depending on how bad your overheating situation is, the first thing you wanna do with your computer, you see all the vents underneath? Some computers, depending on their size, will have vents on the side, maybe on the back, as this one does. Um, but a lot of them will have some vents underneath. Make sure these vents are clean and clear. If these vents are not clean, sometimes they get clogged with dust or lint, sometimes bugs, depending on how old the computer is. If these vents are not clean, then your computer can't breathe. And then components start overheating and damaging themselves. And then now, even if you do clean the vents out, now they're damaged and they're more prone to overheating. So make sure that it's clean. Also, try not to use your computer on things that clog the vents. So try not to use it in bed a lot on your blankets or on your pillows. You gotta have these things free so they can breathe, so airflow can move in and out of this computer. And oftentimes blankets and things, it'll just clog it, it'll stop the airflow. So try not to do that as much as possible. But if you have cleaned out all your vents and they're all nice and clean and clear, and your computer is still overheating, then we gotta go inside the computer to do step two. Now I'm gonna take you inside here. There's one big bottom case that comes off and allows you access into the whole computer. That's how most computers are nowadays. If you need help with your specific model getting inside, you can't figure out how to get inside, leave me a message, let me know, and I can help you out. But for now, I'm gonna take off this bottom case and show you what we're gonna do inside the computer. Okay, so we have two screws on either side here, two screws here, these two in the middle, and that one in the middle. And then we have these two right there on top in the middle. We're gonna take all the screws out. After the screws are removed, we're gonna take our small flat pry tool we're gonna go across the seam and pry the bottom case up off the computer. Uh, this one was actually really easy. I just put it right here in the corner and the whole thing just kind of came up. Um, I assume this has been gone into before, but either way, it was very easy to get off. So before touching anything in a computer, I will either remove or at least unplug the battery first. It makes it safer to work on. So this battery is held in by these two screws here that I can see, this one here, this one here, it looks like that's all the screws, and then it plugs into the motherboard there. So let me go ahead and remove those screws first. It looks like that's all I need for the battery. Yep, that comes up. So this plug right there, it plugs into your motherboard, and it looks like there's small grips on either side. In, in any wires in a computer, avoid pulling on the wires wherever possible. Try to just manipulate that plug. So I have my small, flat plastic pry tool. I'm gonna see if I can push that battery port out. No, I cannot. So I am gonna have to pull on the cord a little bit, unfortunately. Let me get this battery up. Nice and slow, wiggle it out. Okay, so that wasn't too bad. That came out easily. I didn't have to put that much force on it. So now that you're in your computer, step two would be to clean it out as fully as you can. Vacuum it out, um, empty it upside down, see what falls out again, bugs or dirt, things like that. Blow it out, preferably too, if, if you have a blower. Um, but when you're vacuuming it out, try not to touch any components. Try to keep the vacuum off of the actual computer. You don't want to damage anything when you're vacuuming it out. Uh, but yeah, try to get everywhere, especially, again, if, if you have a blower, and try to get in there really good. Side point, guys, with all the tools and equipment, if you need any help with tools and equipment for your computer project, including the screwdrivers, the blowers, um, also, I have my computer sitting on an anti-static pad when I work on it. Either that or an anti-static bracelet are great ideas to avoid damaging things in your computer when you're working on it. If you need any help with tools or supplies like that, there'll be a link above, also below in the description. It'll give you a list of a lot of those tools that I use in my shop. So this is your fan and heat sink assembly here, CPU, GPU area, uh, and both your fans. Mine's really dirty. 
I'm gonna to try to clean those out. So let's take this fan up. Between the antenna wire coming down here, the power cable coming all the way here and, and plugging in the center of the motherboard, and then your speaker wires coming down through here. There's a lot of wires run through this fan. So I'm gonna go ahead and unplug my speakers, get those out of there. Get all these out of the fan so I can take the fan out without all these things holding it down. Let's just move that speaker right out of there. Get these wires out from here. Okay, those are the antenna wires, the speaker, get that out of here. Okay, and then this speaker over there. All right, so for the screws on the fan, looks like we have a screw there and there. Looks like this screw is already up, this screw is already up. So that's what we're looking at here. So we'll take out those screws, see if we can get our fan up. All right, let's see if that free, oh, it looks like it does. And both fans have a single plug that plug into the motherboard right there. And it's got two grips on either side, so I don't have to pull on the wires. I can use my fingernails, I believe. Yes, that came right up. So there's your fan. As you can take your fan assembly and you can take out the screws on the edge you can remove this panel, and then you can really get in there and clean out your fan assembly with a vacuum or a blower, um, an old toothbrush to clean out inside the spokes, and then just put the panel back on and screw it back on in place. So after those two steps, making sure that your vents are clean and clear and not obstructed, and then opening the computer up and vacuuming or blowing it out, keep in mind not all fans open up like mine did. Some of your fans may be sealed. Uh, in that case, you would just vacuum and blow it out as best you can without taking it apart. But after this process, hopefully many of you, your computer won't be overheating anymore. For those of you who are still experiencing an overheating problem, it's more serious than just a breathability issue with your computer. At this point, we're gonna to have to get in, reapply thermal paste to your CPU, GPU, whatever components have thermal paste on them. And to do that, we'll have to get under the heat sink. I'll show you how to do that now. For the rest of the heat sink assembly, it comes down from the vent. It looks like a screw here and here. One there, one there, and one there. And that looks like that's all there is. So let me go ahead and take those screws up. All right, let's see if that, yep, that picks up the whole heat sink. So that's what you're looking at underneath your heat sink. And those are your chips right there. So I just went ahead and took a lot of the large junk off there as much as I could. I'm now gonna use a rag and some alcohol compound to get the rest of it off to fully clean it before I put new thermal paste on. One thing I did want to shout out, when I first took the fan off, some of you may have seen this, there was actually clumps of dust in the heat sink vent that went right up to the fan, but I didn't show you um, that I cleaned those out. I did clean those out, don't forget to do that. In addition to vacuuming and blowing out the fan, you want to get that heat sink vent as well. Okay, so to reapply the thermal paste, I'm gonna zoom in here for you. Now we don't want to apply too much, and I'll show you how much is the right amount, get right above the chip. Just like that, right in the center of the chip. Do it over here as well. So that's the max amount of thermal paste you should be putting up on a chip. So now we'll bring the heat sink back over. We'll line it up and we'll set it down as straight as possible. Give it a nice press. And now we'll reattach our heat sink. Okay, so now we've reapplied the thermal paste. We've cleaned the computer out. At this point, I hope many of you, your overheating issues are over. Um, another thing you can do, make sure you're using your laptop on a cooling pad. Um, there'll be a link above, also below in the description, to some computer accessories that I recommend for my customers. You'll see some cooling pad options in that list. If at this point your computer is still overheating, then I would assume it's been overheating for a while and the damage is done. 
Um, at this point, components, your CPU, GPU, your motherboard maybe, they've been damaged. Now they're prone to overheating and these steps isn't gonna reverse that. So if your computer is still overheating after all this and a cooling pad, you may wanna look at replacing the CPU if it's replaceable on your motherboard. If not, replace your motherboard because once they get that damaged, they're gonna to continue to be damaged until they no longer work. Um, if you need any help with any of that, with the replacements, um, whether your computer has a replaceable CPU or not, or the specific motherboard swap out for your model, let me know, and I'll try to help you guys with any of that. So I hope this video was helpful. I hope it helped you out with your overheating issue. If you have any questions, check out the FAQs below in the description. It could save you some time getting an answer. If you do need to leave me a question or comment, please do. I do try to get to those a couple times a day at least. So thank you so much for watching, guys. I look forward to seeing you in my next video.